So essentially, when we are programming, um, the whole idea of programming is to be able to do all the stuff that you are doing in calculations and all the good things that you're doing and be able to uh, uh, keep it at some place to be able to manage it. That's what you do every single time that you're thinking about something. Every single time you do a 2 plus 2, you are doing that in your brain. So if I told you 2 plus 2 plus 5, then I said 2 plus 2, 4, then plus 5 is not. So that 4 goes sit somewhere before you can add that one to, to 5. So all these temporary stuff that you are doing, you are keeping it in your short-term memory and deal with it and do stuff like that. When we are dealing with uh, a computer science, you do the exact same thing, which means you actually store all the information that you are dealing with temporarily in some place to be able to access it. So say you want to get something from the keyboard and uh, do something about it. Like I'm going to tell you, I don't know, what is, uh, uh, find the average uh, marks of a class, okay? If I want to do that, then first you have to ask, how many students do you have? So you're going to ask that question. You have to keep that somewhere. And then you're going to have to start asking one by one, what is the first mark? What is the second mark? What is the third mark? Fourth mark? Get the marks one by one. Start adding it up to a, to a variable. And when they're all added, then you divide it to the number, and they get the average. Okay? So if you want to do something like this, then you need all these temporary stuff to put the to keep the stuff in, uh, and we call those stuffs that I repeated 50 times now, uh, a type, okay? Uh, so the variables, and each variable has a type, depending on what you are dealing with. Now, uh, the question that I had over there, uh, four most common types of thing that are used in C language, two of them are integers, and the other two uh, floating point numbers. So character and integer, two integers, okay? And then float and double, uh, Floating point numbers. The reason they call it floating points is that, um, um, okay, I'm not going to go to details. They are not. They are real numbers. They are. They are not. Uh, they are not whole numbers. They're not integrals. Which means 2.5 could be a double or a float, and an integer is two, five. It's not 2.0. 2.0 is a double. Okay, two, five, nine, six, thirty-two. These are integral numbers. Yes. Pardon me. Uh, character, that, that's the thing. A good question. Very good question. Why character is an integer? Uh, because initially, as we were talking about in the first class, I mentioned that when they wanted to actually set up the computer a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, they said, we're going to keep all this stuff in bits. Remember that? And I said, each bit holds two positions. You put two of them, it holds four. You put three of them, it holds eight. And you put eight of them, it holds 250 different six positions. Because 256 different positions is a perfect match to encode alphabet and characters, they call that 256 positions, that is one byte, a character, which is essentially not. A character is an integer big enough to be able to hold the ASCII code of a character. That's why they call it the character. As a matter of fact, it's just an integer that its range is either between 0 to 255 or from minus 128 to positive 127. So the value we input doesn't matter. Pardon me? The value that we input being a string doesn't matter. We are not talking about strings. I think that would be called the letter, uh, one letter. We call it the character. OK, so mm. it doesn't matter that we enter something between quotes. It's still an integer. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, another beautiful question. Another beautiful point. Let me just uh, open up Visual Studio, because I teach by coding. So let me just open this so I can actually give you the examples on it, and we have it on GitHub so we can take, it, take a look at it later on. So again, for those uh, who want to have, uh, 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 who want to know what is, uh, how do we create a, a, a simple uh, console application, this is again another recording of it. So what you do, I'm, uh, if you have done it already several times, you can simply go on, a, uh, on the, uh, uh, recent ones and just click on it, um, or you can go File, New, Project, and select where you want to have it. So I'm going to have it in my Git repository in here so I can push it to GitHub. So Notes, SNQ, this is Section N, correct? And today is, I started from 2, I don't know why. Meh, anyway, so... I'm going to make it through. The first session I put it to, probably I put zero, 01 something. So I'm going to create a, so I'm going to select this folder, 
So that's going to be the folder that I'll be in, SNN, and I'm going to call the project 03-January 24th. And automatically, a folder is going to get created for that inside SNN directory. SNN directory. So uh, it's going to be a, a Visual C++ desktop application, Windows desktop wizard. It shouldn't be any other thing. That's what you do. Don't go on console application. No, don't go on desktop application. Windows desktop wizard. There's a reason behind it. Please follow this one. Okay, these two has to be unchecked because we are not we are creating only one project. We don't want to have several projects in a solution. We're not going to check that one, and we don't know about Git to use that one. So we'll, they are both uh, supposed to be empty. I'm going to click OK. And pre-compiled headers uncheck and check empty project. That's what we created. What well, that's what we created, and that creates an empty platform for you to start coding in. Uh, did I ask this question? Anybody's okay? Anybody has problem with lights going on and off? Some people seizure. That's why I'm asking. Okay, are we okay? All right. All right. Well, medium. How do you turn this off? Uh, I don't know. Okay, so I'm gonna go low. Okay, the thing that I wanted to turn off is still on. Okay. Anyways, uh, you guys have enough light over there? All right. So now we have an empty platform, so I'll go to source files and I'll right click on sort fi source files and I'll go add new item because I have a new item. If I had a file somewhere that I want to reopen and work with it, a file that doesn't have a project attached to it, what I had to do, first I had to right click on the solution and find out where it is exactly. So it opens the folder of the project on your computer. Now that you have it open, you can actually move the file that you want over here and then open an existing file to continue your work. But if you are starting from scratch right now as I'm doing, you right click, you go add new item, and then um, it's code, it's C++. Of course, it's not C++, it's C, so I'm going to call it prg.c. Remember, type the whole thing. If you just do prg and hit enter, it becomes a C++ program. Because C++ is an, a superset of C language, still all printf stuff work in it, but in a different way. So you won't notice it until it's too late and you bring it into map matrix and see nothing works. So make sure that the extension over there is C. That tells to the C++ compiler that you have to compile this as a C program. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Not r before you do any coding and compilation, not after. <laughs> okay, before you do anything, because every single time you yeah, build, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, of course, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, 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 yes. If, you're, if you did it, if you saw it CPP, oops, you just click on it and rip, um, yeah. So click OK. And then we have this one. Then the first thing we write is define, uh, anybody remembers what it was? CRT, secure, no warning, right? Is that the one? We'll find out. Anyways, and then uh, include standard in include standard input output dot h int main void. Uh, oh. We are creating a function. A main function that everything starts with, that function returns an integer to the operating system. What is the integer that it's returning to the operating system after, after, after everything is done? It's zero. Why is it returning that? Because the sky is high. At this moment, we don't want to know. We'll talk about it later when we are more familiarized with, uh, with functions. But this is how you start. So now I have a program that works perfectly if I compile it, control F5, execute it, it works perfectly and it does nothing because it's an empty function, right? I wrote a, this is the most simple C program you can write, a program that does nothing, okay? Now, back to your question, single quotes. So, um, when you are right, when you create a type character CH, okay? All right, and you set that character to A, say, for example, like that, that is not A. That is actually the number 65. 
Because we cannot memorize the ASCII code of characters, when you put two single codes around it, you are asking for compiler's help to give you the code of A. So essentially, if I add 1 to CH, it becomes B. If I add 2 to CH, it becomes C. So you hold the ASCII code of character A into CH. That's why essentially CH is an integer. What is the value of A in ASCII? Pardon me? What is the value of this A in ASCII? 65. Potatoes, potatoes. Same? Yeah, there's no metaphor in here. Literally, what I'm talking about is literally. That's literally the number 65. They work. Literally, they are the same. OK. All right, so that's what I wanted to tell you. Now let's go back to here. All right. So uh, it's all their sizes uh, that matters. Uh, they are size specifiers that they, 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 they call it that way because uh, you can put it in front of int and it means that. So you can say short int, it means a short integer. Long int, a long integer. Long, long int, a long, long integer. Long, long, long int. No, I'm joking. It's just two. Okay? So, so long, long int. This is just different sizes and depending of, on compilers, the, the sizes may, be, may vary. But, but uh, relatively, they mean what they mean. And you can just ignore the int and just write short. It knows when you're writing short, you mean short int. When you write long, it knows you're writing long int. If you write long int, I'm OK. Uh, I wouldn't do it. But if, if you just write it like this, the compiler will understand you too. All right? And short is essentially two bytes. OK? Two bytes. Int and long use. Integer is a very naughty thing. It used to be two int, two characters, and then it became four characters. So int and long are almost the same size now, depending on a platform that you're on. So they are both ints, uh, four bytes. And the long, long is eight bytes, bigger integer, OK? Uh, when it's eight bytes, it, you, know, you know what does it mean? Like when I say eight bytes, essentially means 64 bits. So two to power 64 is the hugest positive number that you can hold in it, unsigned number. But if you sign it, again, remember, I told you when you are dealing with an integer, an integer has many, can hold different, uh, can hold up to several different positions, OK? Um, so if we had an integer that could hold 10 numbers, uh, uh, 10 digits, 0 to 9, if I want to say z what is the biggest number that this thing can hold, it would have been 9, right? Now, if I want to have negative and positive, I had to decide which one of these thumbs are 0. If I say this one is 0, then it becomes minus 4, minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's why always the positive number is 1 less than the negative number. So when I say a character is from 0 to 255, if you deal with it as signed, which means you want both negatives and positive, it starts from minus 128 and goes up to 100. 27 as max. Okay, just remember that. And the same thing happens with short, long, and everything. You, you, the sizes are everything down there. Um, uh, again, integral types, integer types are, uh, um, we're well, not going to talk about that one, uh, are uh, kept uh, in, a, in a bit pattern, and you know exactly what they are. Uh, I don't think that we need to go through that. We talked about ASCII code of uh, um, Characters. If you want to know what is the ASCII code of characters, just type ASCII and uh, go, for, I don't know, go for images. That's easier. So all these are ASCII codes. ASCII. So if I click over here and that one, really? It opened the site? I didn't want it to open it. So I wanted to open the picture. But anyways, this is what it is. These are the code of, uh, the, the code of all the ASCII Value. So space is essentially 32, 9 is 57, 0 is 48, A is 65, Z is 132, and it goes up to um, 127. Anything after 127 is, uh, go, goes to uh, graphic ones or special characters. Yes? As a. Oh, as a, okay. depending how you to ask to print it. We'll come to it in two seconds. So print, the print function in C language is called printf. It stands for print formatted. 
So it's what format you want to print it. So you can say to printf, I want ch to be printed as an integer, then 65 is going to get printed. If you say I want ch to get printed as a character, then a is going to get printed. So you have to ask the computer how to print it. That's why C language is a middle level language. It's a language that you are kind of in a lower side when you are dealing with input and output. Yes? Okay, what if I said an integer? I would have got integer. Exact same thing. Exact, exact same thing. No string. String is a complete. A, str a, string, a string is something that we're going to learn after, you, after we learn arrays. So let's make sure that we don't make that mistake because uh, I know that you mean character. Yeah. So you're saying, what if I have an integer and I put 65 in an integer and print it as a character? Yeah. A is going to get printed. Okay. okay. But it's a waste of time. It's, sorry, it's a waste of space. You are actually using four bytes to hold one byte data in it. You see, so, so it's, like, it's like you go to Tim Hortons and say, I want an extra large cup, but only put small coffee in it. <laughs> that doesn't make sense, right? That's, that's the only thing. So it's just types that uh, types define what variables are, and usually it relates to their size too. So character is the smallest int, long, long is the biggest one. You're asking very good questions. All right, so that's that. These are the ranges that I was talking about. If, if, you, if you look at the values, you'll see what I mean. When it says min and max, you'll see that the max is always one less than min. And I don't want to even attempt to actually read this number. So, <laughs> yes? I have a question about the negative sign. Does it hold one? Mm. That's the optional part that I don't want to talk about because we are sure. then we ha I have to go to the bit pattern of this stuff. That becomes too low for our class, too low level for our class. I want, um, these are all amazing questions, but I have to limit myself to explain things that are a little too much where is not necessary for our basic knowledge. When we are going higher or we want to learn assembly, then for now, when, when, I, when in specific parts I ask you to trust me, please, okay, and have it as a fact, just accept it until the time comes that we have enough patience to understand what is in detail. But if um, you want to actually see what it is, go check two's complement, and you know exactly how. So Google this two's complement, and it's going to tell you exactly what it is. Or look at the option part of the here, optional part of here. Yes. Can you explain sign and unsigned? Yeah. So let's talk. That's the character thing. You see the first two characters. The first one says 8 bits minus 128. Yeah. To, that's a signed int, signed character. You literally say signed in front of it, S-I-G-N-E-D. So you write signed character, then it becomes, but everything's by default signed, so you never mention it. If you want it to be unsigned, all positive, you have to actually write unsigned care. If you do that, then the values become <laughs> from 0 to 255, which means if you add 1 to 255, what happens? No, no, that's a beautiful thing. So uh, this is what I have. <laughs> so variable values in variables are like a circle. OK, this is where the minimum is. I cannot write, let's see if I can write it, min with a mouse is very difficult to do. This is what minimum is, and this is what maximum is. Okay? Now, if it's from 0 to 255, you add 1 to 255, where do you go? 0. If it's minus 128, you go 127 plus 1, it becomes minus 128. Why? Because the sky is high. I'm not going to explain why. That's exactly the answer to your question by the way, okay? How does it keep the negative numbers and so on and so forth? Just keep that in mind and know it. So that's, that's what they call overflow, all right? When something overflows. Are we okay with this? All right. Uh, floating point numbers are, the most important thing that you need to know about floating point numbers is they are kept in scientific notation. 
which means when you are actually, uh, it, it has two parts. Somewhere it was showing it. There it was, shows sign, exponent, and significant. You see that? So over here, it kept, keeps the number. The, the 2.596 goes over here to the power of something, and it's in here it says it's negative or positive. So at quite a, it has quite an amount of processing to do. And scientific notation, again, if you want to hold the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, if you want to hold this one in a, in a double, in a floating point value, what it's going to hold is 1.2345678 multiplied by uh, 1234567810 10 to the power 8, right? And that's the number. So what it does, it actually keeps that number and 8. That is the power that is supposed to uh, uh, multiply it into. It keeps it that way, and because of that fact, because of that fact, sometimes there is not enough for the partial parts. So you want this number. When it stores it, it holds this number. Because it's a big number, so if you are holding something like this, okay, it holds only this much, and then it multiplies. So some of them, some value will be lost. Because of this fact, remember, floating points and doubles are never precise. And that's where it gets the, num the name. You say floating point, it means numbers that have partial. But double is actually stands for double precision. It means the precision of double is double the size of floating point. If you do a counting with a double, you'll see after a few calculations, you lose a cent because it's not precise. Careful about it. You can never compare two double numbers, even if your calculation logically reaches to the same point. When you compare them, they are not equal because one is 0.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
for every single type, there is a way to write a literal value for. Okay? So if I want an integer, if I have integer i, like I have integer i, and I, and I want to set that i to something later, I can write 234. That's an integer going into that one. All right? Now I want to tell you something at this moment, just a phrase that you get used to. Line number four, I am initializing ch to a. Line number seven, I am setting i to 234. They are two different things. What is the meaning of initiating something? Can anybody tell me? What does it mean? Oh, okay. <laughs> Perfect. So, so I, it means at the moment of creation, you give it a value. That means initialization. The other one, even if I do it like this, if, even if they are back to back in two different lines, it means at line five, an integer i will be created with garbage in it. When I say garbage, it means a random value. Okay? It means at line five, I'm going to have i. i gets created with garbage in it. Then I overwrite that garbage with 234. Okay? Where in four, I am creating a ch and at the moment of creation, it will have the value a in it and nothing else. It may not matter at this point, but you understand this, you're going to thank me in OP244. Okay? Keep that in mind. Pardon me? Garbage. Random value. A random value. You don't know what was in. When I mention, when I, create, when I say int i, somewhere in your RAM that is dedicated to your program, four bytes will be registered, assigned to you, and it will be named i. Correct? What was in those four, four bytes before? We don't know. That's why we call it garbage, because it's a random value. Okay. Any place that you're, I'm going to get to you in two seconds. So any variable that you do, although different compilers different, make it different, different, some of them initialize it to zero, some of them don't, you should always think it's garbage. That's why I'm calling it garbage. Because, because we are writing multi-platform programs, our program moved move from one computer to another one, to another platform, to another compiler goes, and each compiler behaves it differently. Because of that fact, you should never, ever trust one compiler. And you have to go in a way that works with all of them. And assuming I have garbage in it is the best way to go. Yes? If uh, when you essentially declare the variable like integer i, and you say, let's say you set a value, and then in the next line you go. So um, I'm going to do exactly what you're saying to understand what's the question. So you said I initialize i to a value. OK. Plus equal 5. Yeah. Will that change the original value of i? Of course not. Plus equal essentially means, plus equal essentially means i is set to i plus 1. That's what I wanted to tell you, and I didn't have time to, to mention it yet. Will you let me finish what I'm saying, and then you've got to get here. So I'm not going to mention this right now, and I'm, we're going to go through it later. So I, what I was saying was that, the first one is initialization, and this one is setting. So I am initializing, initializing, uh, oh, what am I writing? Initializing ch to a. In here, I am setting i to 235. Two different things. Just keep that in mind. All right? Now, so. We could, like, if I want, if I, so integer is just like that. But if I wanted to have a, a long integer, let's call it li, and I want to initialize it to something, I have to say 234l. It means, that means I have a large cup and I have 234 in it. <laughs> You're just mentioning the size of the cup, okay? The first one, you have an integer with 234, 4 bytes. In the second one, you're saying the 234 that I want, I want it to be 8 bytes with 234 in it. You have to use the L. L. You don't have to. That's, we're going to come to it. If you do, it means you need to do, you are specific, explicitly telling to the compiler the constant value that I want. I want it to be in a large size. Okay? If you don't mention it, compiler is smart enough is to what we call it casting. 
it temporarily changes 234 in a long and puts it over there. So don't worry about it. For now, because we don't know why, we'll just gotta put over here 234. The compiler will take care of it. Okay? The compiler will essentially take care of the, the fact that it's a so you, okay? But just know that if you need to, you're not going to need it in IPC 144, but if you need to, you can actually spe specify what type of a constant literal value you're dealing with, if you need to, all right? If you don't, then so. In here, I'm just, so I'm going to write it just, just for the heck of it. So, so 234 is a long, a constant long value. Okay, or a literal long value. Are we okay with this? So you don't have to use constant if you use the L? Is a keyword constant? No, no, constant. <coughs> literal. It's a literal long value. By constant, I mean by constant, I mean unchangeable, not the keyword cost. See, when you use a keyword that is already used in a language, the confusion happens like that. So a literal, literal long value, okay? Uh, these are the escape sequences that I was talking about. When you're dealing about different types of characters, when you're talking about characters, uh, sometimes you need some action to happen using that character, okay? So the character is not a printable character, but it means something. If you do, if you print backslash a, I'll do that. The, your computer is going to go bing. That means alarm. So printing backslash a, it does it. It makes a ding. Default ding of your computer, whatever that is. Okay. Backslash b, you're telling to uh, your print statement to go backwards one character. So it overwrites the previous one. Backslash f has nothing to do with your screen. It's for printers. It feeds the form, goes to the beginning of the next form. So if you do backslash F on a printf, one paper is going to go out. At dinosaur's time when I was studying, we used to print out our outputs. You don't know. For you, it's like millions of years ago. But, but one person by mistake put a backslash F in a loop, and they almost threw him out of university because like 95,000 pages were coming out of the printer. So that's the thing. Careful with that. Backslash N goes to new line. Backslash R goes to the beginning of the same line. Backslash T goes to the next tab position. So if you're at position, if your tab size is eight, if you are at position three, it jumps to eight. If you are at position nine, it jumps to 16. If you are at position 15, it still jumps to 16. That's why we hate tab. We don't use it because it doesn't have a constant value, okay? Vertical tab, forget about it. Uh, if you want to print backslash itself, because backslash start a, is a start of a uh, scape sequence, how do you print backslash itself? You put two backslashes. To print a single code, backslash single code, because single code means what? Single code means, okay? And uh, to uh, uh, print a double code later on, it's your favorite string. So uh, that's uh, when, if you want to print actually a double code, you do that one. If you want to print a question mark, you use that one. These are escape sequences. And these are all ASCII values for them, by the way. String literals that we don't want to talk about right now is this one. So if you want to have a string literal, I don't know why we are mentioning it. Yuck, yuck, forget about it. We'll, when we come to a race, we'll get to it and we'll understand. Now, now it's the part to actually see how we're dealing with, uh, dealing with input and output. So, uh, uh, what do I want to say? When I'm teaching like this, see this topic is gone, I'm going to go to the next one, right? So what I will do, um, I'll save this one, I'll go, I'll name it a new one, so I'm going to say, uh, uh, I'm going to call it 01, then I'm going to put over here setting and initializing, okay, dot C. So that's going to be the name, and then I'll continue with the, with the original one that I have. When you look at GitHub, you're going to see 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, the things that we have done, so you can review and match with what I just talked about. Am I right? So how do we read? Now, there are certain terminologies, buzzwords, that I'm going to use, and I want you to use the exact same thing. Please. 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 One of the ways of learning is to speak the right terminology, even if you don't understand it. When you use 
say the correct terminology when you are talking about a science, you will just say it like a parrot, it's going to sit in your brain as that's the standard. And when you understand the meaning, poof, suddenly everything makes sense. If you don't use the correct terminology, your brain is not going to get used to it. So when you understand it, you're going to say, what the heck? What was that? So let's always do that. Always try to use the correct terminology, and that uh, uh, will create the hoopla moment for you. Anyways. I want to get two numbers, and I want to multiply them and put the results out and see what it is, OK? I want to write a program. So the very first thing that I need to do when you are writing a program, you have to put yourself in the user's shoes, OK? Which means you have to say, OK, if I want to have a program, and that program of mine is supposed to get two numbers and find the uh, product between the two, multiply them, and then give me the result, what I want to see that program as asking, what I want to see that program asking, okay? So program has to tell you something. Enter the first number. Then you have to read that number. Then you have to say, enter the second number. Then you have to read that number. Then you have to do a little calculation, and then you have to print the result, right? So that's exactly what, and write these things down in English, and then translate it into C. And try to remember, have you seen those movies, oh, I want robots are walking and talking like robots? You have to be, think that way. You have to think everything step by step, as if you are talking to the dumbest person possible. That's how you program. Why? Because computer is the dumbest being possible is, that is out there. To, um, to be able to do something, you have to enunciate and tell everything in, in every single, in much more detail, much complete detail as I can do, as, as you can do. And that's the way to program. So, when I said, so what I need to do, and by the way, this is called commenting. Two slashes, you see that? You have to comment even your breathing for now. Anything, I am breathing right now. Okay, so, so comment everything to get used to it. The biggest problem in computer programming industry is that the programmers do not comment enough. Because at the moment they are coding, they are thinking in C. Uh, or thinking in a language they are writing. So they just keep writing. And they put it away, they go eat, drink coffee, come back and look at the code as if somebody else wrote it. Because you won't, you know, it, it becomes cryptic after you wrote it. So commenting is a good thing. Don't take that thing literally, okay? When I say comment when you're breathing, because people, some people really do. Uh, what I'm saying is that when you see what you have written looks a little complicated, then comment it, okay? But in our case, I'm just going to put this, uh, uh, the sequence up. So I, either I can do like this if I have a one-liner, or I, I can use the old-fashioned type of commenting in C language, which is essentially this. So, so you can go like that, a slash star and a star slash. It means anything between the two is a comment. Don't compile it. It means nothing. It's just a comment, right? So what I need to do, get the first number. Oh, sorry. Prompt, get the first number. Prompt for the first number. Then two, get the first number. Or let's make it right, read the first number. Sorry for the dictation thingy, fix it later on yourself. Then prompt for the second number. Then Read the second number, right? Then uh, multiply the two and keep the result. Six, print the result. Okay, I want to multiply two numbers. I don't know how many lines of uh, that's called a pseudocode, pseudocode I have written, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, how do we print? It's print formatted. What does it mean? You, you, the name of the function, first of all, the function is a standard input output header file. It's right in there, okay? Can you read it at the end of the class? Okay, so I'm going to say over here printf, and you put a string over there. The string is a series of characters back to back in one place, 
they are identified with double quotes, okay? So in here, I'm going to say, please enter the first, first number. I'm not going to go to new line because I want them to enter it in front of it. If I put backslash in, it goes to new line. I don't want that, okay? Then I need, now the user is going to see this, right? So when I run this, and run your program immediately to see what happens. So this is what's going to happen. So it's going to actually say, please enter the first number. And it doesn't go to new line. Does he press any key to continue? That's the end of my program. So that's the place that I have to get the number, and that's what I'm going to do. To get a number, to read a number, it's called scan, scan formatted. So I'm going to say scanf. Then you have to put a format specifier inside the string to see what is the format that you are getting. I want to multiply two so integers, so we're going to get two integers. If I want to read an integer, the format spe specifier for it is D. What starts the format specifier? That's percent sign. So anytime you put percent, that means I want to mention what I want to read. So I want to say read an integer, that's percent D. Are these on in 4x? No, no, no. Don't listen to him. D. <laughs> okay. Okay. But what do I read? I have to read it into some place. I have to have a place. That's when I need a variable. I need to have a type and a variable. So I need a variable. I'm going to put over here int first number. Not x, y, z. First number. Your variables should make, make, make sense. Yeah, uh, again, at my time, dinosaur's time, we used to call everything i, j, x, w, z, y. That's good, but the problem is that then when you come back, you don't know what is that bloody i over there. What does it stand for? You know, there are certain things that you can do. Like you can say actually i, because uh, for iteration, later on you're going to learn loops and stuff. That's a standard. You can do that. Okay. You can, like, if you have temporary things to use, there are certain things that is accepted in community. Yes. But when you have a business logic, use your business logic values for your variables. Do I need to initialize that to anything? No, because I'm just going to read it. Why do I initialize it? Right? I'm going to read something over it. It's not that it's dirty. I want to clean it up first. Okay, it's just going to override it with something. Now, I'm going to say read an integer and put it in the first terminology is coming out. And I want you to listen to it. Read it in address of first number. If you write an envelope, you put an address in front of it, my address, because you want it to go to Fardad's. Okay, so this envelope goes to address of Fardad. It means it's going to come to me. All right, that's what it is. If you mention ampersand, I'm going to kill you. That's not an ampersand. That's address of first number. What does it mean? We don't care. We just say it. Okay, when the time comes, we're going to understand it. Are we okay with this? Beautiful. Now that I got the first number, I, I can suspect that the second number is going to be needed. Okay? So int, oomph is a new version of int. Int, second number. Okay? I'm being a little, uh, I'm doing a little exaggeration over here. If I had num1 and num2, that would work too. Okay? But I just did it this way, just the heck. Uh, writing COBOL programming. Anyway, so second number, that's uh, the second one I'm going to get. So I have to actually, uh, I, I want to actually uh, uh, write the second one. I'm lazy. I'm just going to copy that. What? Formatting section? I don't want to format. OK. <laughs> All right. Anyways, copy and paste. So that's the second. That's one of the most dangerous things to do, OK? To copy and paste. Because you copy and paste, and you forget to change a few things, and then hell is going to break loose, OK? So that's second number. And do you see when I do second, the rest is there? It actually helps me type. This is called IntelliSense. You see that? It says second number and it's selected. If you press tab, it's going to complete your, it's going to complete your thing so you don't misspell anything. Okay? This is what beautiful, what, it's a beautiful thing with, with uh, IDEs, Integrated Development Environments. They help you write the code with, with uh, less effort. Okay? So all those people who want to program raw in a text editor, no, don't do that. Do it with this. Use all the things that you, uh, all the tools that you have. So I have the second number and uh, 
uh, first number, a second number, and I need the result, so I'm going to say int result. Right? So result is the second one, then I'm going to go over here. Now that I have the first and the second number, result, result is set to first number multiplied by second number, which brings us to arithmetic operations. Asterisk means multiplication, remember that, okay? So what are the four basic operations in arithmetic? Minus, plus, multiplication, division, right? So minus, plus, multiplication, division. Two minus three, three plus four. And I just multiplied and put it in result. Are we okay with this? Okay? Now I want to print the result out. Okay? I'm gonna, I can do it in a bad way. I'm going to say printf. The result is. Okay? That's why they call it print formatted. We come to your point now. I want to print an integer. What do I put? Percent D. So it's, gonna, it's a placeholder. So I'm going to say the result is. Put, a, put the integer over here. And in here, I'm going to say result. Funny thing is that if you want to put something inside the value, you need its address. But if you want to print the value, you just print it. You don't need its address, OK? So print the result, OK? And my program is complete. It has one bug. Who can tell me what's the bug? Uh, the slash n. Where? Where? No, 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 no. Just this one. Uh, let's run it and see what's the problem. It's not a bug, actually. It's just an ugly thing. Oh, I have error. Beautiful. OK. So this is what happens when you have an error. And I'm going to make plenty of them. I'm going to have mistakes everywhere. OK? Nobody can write the perfect code at the first time, even if it's two lines of code. So no, and I'm going to see what the error is. Scanf, this function value, may be unsafe. Uh, it means we did not spell this properly. There you go. See? So now take a look. You see over here it says scanf is unsafe. That's why we have this thing over here. Warnings. Is that the one? Okay. Let's try it one more time. Yay! It ran. Okay? So that was the reason. Okay? Uh, now you know why we have those things. Because uh, the new C language considers the old things unsafe. What is unsafe? Don't worry. It's not going to jump and bite you. There's a reason for it. We'll find out. So what is the first number? 10. What is the second number? 20. And the result is 200. Press any key to continue. No, that's not right. It's supposed to go to the next line, right? That's where we need a backslash in. Why don't I have a backslash in over here? Because the user to enter something has to hit the enter key. The enter is new line. Because it's new line, there's no need to do it. It's going to go to new line anyway. So I'm going to put a backslash in over here, and ladies and gentlemen, or gentlemen in this class. The result's going to be this. So it's going to be 5 and 4, and I have the result is 20. OK? But the good way of writing it is this. Printf percent %d multiplied by percent %d is percent %d. Be descriptive and full stop. But, oh, where's my full stop? Full stop, backslash n. So now I can say over here first number, second number, and I can say the result. Okay? So essentially, I, I, what's going to get printed is that first number will go to first placeholder, that is percent d. Second number goes to second placeholder, that is the second percent d after multiplied by. And result will go to the third placeholder, hence printing format it. Yes? What if you were to do print f and then just result? Like without the percent d or anything like that? Then you're going to use cuckoo. That's exact. Because you're writing a cuckoo code, the result is going to be a cuckoo result. We'll do that. So we'll see. So 
So if I if I just do this and I don't write anything in here, is that what you're saying? No, like so you don't write the uh, working quote. You just write result, like print that, and then just result. Result. Yes. Yeah. Okay. There are certain rules and regulations for print all all printf and scanf family. You have to put a string that is the format of printout. If you only want to print the result and nothing else, you have to say, I only want to print an integer and nothing else. OK? One most important thing, don't guess. Try. That was a good guess. If C language had intelligence. But remember, C language is a programming language for a computer. And a computer is the dumbest thing ever. Anything that you expected it will understand, it won't. Us as a human being, we say, oh, print a result. I should print the result. C won't understand that. Very important thing to know. And thank you for the question. OK? Yes? No. OK, so, so I'm going to go back. Uh, I'm going to go back to what we had and, co and comment this. So in here, I'm going to comment this, and I'm going to say bad output. Bad output. And I'm going to put this one, and I'm going to say even worse. OK? And this one is a good one. Now I'm going to run this beautiful program of mine three years later. I'm going to say enter the first number. I'm going to put 34, second one 23. 34 multiplied by 24 is 782. So it actually gives me a descriptive thing so I understand what's going on. Are we OK with this? Yes? Keep going, asking for the next one, for the next one, for the next one. We'll know it in two weeks, three weeks. <laughs> okay, are we okay with this? Automation and stuff like that, that's repet repetition. That's essentially what's called a loop. We have several different ways to do a loop. I'm going to teach you only one of them. I don't want you to get caught in syntax. Although it's in the lecture, but I'm going to explicitly ask you, don't look at it. Don't use it unless you understand what a loop is. First, use the general format of a loop and decision making and all those stuff. We're going to talk about it today, the decision making. But when it comes to several different ways of doing the same thing, first learn the first way comfortably so you can do everything and then apply the things that you have later on. Okay? It's very important. It's like you first learn how to ride a bike and then learn how to go and you know, do all those acrobatic stuff with it. Otherwise, you're going to crack your head and die. Yes. I'll kill you with my bare hands. Do not, <laughs> do not ask any questions about C++, OP244. We are stuck in C, and you're asking me in C++. <laughs> OK. The answer is yes, by the way. Because <laughs> as I said, C is, C++ is a superset of C. So anything in C will run in C++, but not the other way around. And did you see that I put over here three different things? OK. I could have done it like this. I could have done it like this. OK? You're not allowed to do that in my class. Why? Because I'm the boss. OK? You can do it. I'll teach it to you. I may give it to you in a walkthrough. You may see other people write it, and you know it, but not in my class. OK? In my class, every single variable will have its own type. Unless you are in a test or an exam or something, and you have to write something quickly. That I understand. But when you are writing a code to give it to me, to hand it to me, it must be the best thing you have ever written, which means you should not use sloppy stuff like that. Every single company that you're going to go, there's going to be a weirdo at the top that's going to tell you to do things in a specific way, and you have no other way by following the person's rule. I am playing the role of the weirdo over here, and I'm asking you, you are not allowed to do this. Yes? And you said the values of all three in the same value? Yeah, you can do set 
one. Oh, no, not that one. You cannot. Uh, so initialize this one to one, to two, initialize the other one to whatever. You can do all these things. Yeah, you can initialize this one to, yeah, but no, not in my class. Syntax-wise, you can, but not in my class, okay? So not in my class, okay? Are we okay with this? Yes. Mm -hmm. it's just open, uh, if I set first number to a value yeah. no it just overwrites it it's oh, just waste of time okay. yeah it's just waste of time remember one of the things that you need to understand about variables and setting them uh, it's not like variables are not like really a container may I touch this yeah, yeah. okay it's not like a clear container where you add something it adds up to it it's not like that when you set it it first empties it and put the second one on so the first thing is gone okay unless you ask it to do so are we okay with this are we okay one? Are we okay two? Sold. Okay, down to this lab, we're gonna go for a break. I'm gonna pause the recording. Please remind me to start the recording. So input and output, we worked on it now. For different types of things that you are using, for different types of things that you are getting with your scanf or your printing with your printf, you have to put different placeholders, format specifiers we call it. I call it placeholder because that's what it is. And if I see you laughing at your cell phone again, you'll be in trouble. Please put your cell phones and stuff away. I hate that. Okay? So, uh, uh, what do I want to say? Sadly, a teacher sees everything, please. Um, and I get distracted very easily. So, um, so whenever you're using printf or scanf and you want to read something or print something, at the place that you want to read or or print, you have to put the proper placeholder. If you want to get a character, it's percent %c. If you want to get an integer, it's percent %d. If you want to get a float, it's percent %f. If you want to get a double, it's percent %lf. Now, going back to the example that we had over there, not here, in here. All right, just to show you what I mean by that, I can do this, printf, Please enter a letter. Okay? And in here I'm going to say now character CH. Now I'm going to say scanf percent C. Okay? And in here I'm going to say address of CH. So one letter will be read and it's going to be put inside CH. Right? Now this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say printf the letter you entered is percent %c, okay? And I want to put single quotes around it, so I'm going to say backslash single quote. Oh, 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 bad place. Okay. Backslash single quote. Backslash single quote, okay? Because I want to print two single quotes. And the ASCII, ASCII. ASCII code is percent %d, okay, backslash n. Now in here I'm going to say ch and ch. So I am printing the character ch as a character, so it's going to print its shape. Then I'm going to print it as an integer, it's going to tell me what is the code behind it, what is the integer behind it. Okay? That's why we said characters are literally integers. I have to just treat them differently. It's the way we dis display it. That's how it works. And in here I can say this afterwards. Printf and the, the next letter in alphabet is percent %c. Oh. Single code, percent %c, single code, and go to new line, backslash n. And then I'll put over here ch plus 1. It's an integer, right? If the code of a is 65, when I print 66, that's a b. Are we okay with this? So let's try this. Control F5, run forest run. 
Okay, please enter a letter. I'm going to put over here X, and I hit enter. Letter you enter is X. The ASCII code is 88. The next letter is Y. Are we okay with this? Do you understand what happened? Anybody have any question in here? Pardon me? Uh, I, want, I knew you were going to ask that. It, the next letter in the ASCII table is going to come up. And that's going to, so in the ASCII table, whatever we have after Z, that's what's going to come up. So it's a good idea to have a condition to make sure we're going to come to it soon, okay? We're going to fix this, okay? So bug mentioned in class is what if the letter is Z? And we got to fix that, okay, later on. How to fix that? Yes. I have a question. Why for your scanf function do you have an at the address of th? Can it just be th? No. Why? For this moment, the sky is high. When we get to when we go to addresses and and, and pointers later on, everything's going to be crystal clear. But last time you didn't put an address. Impossible. Otherwise, it wouldn't have wouldn't have worked. I can bet my life on it. If it added the two things, let me see if I'm dead or not. Let me see if I'm dead or not. The previous one? Ampersand and ampersand. Yay! Address of. Okay, so address of is there. If it doesn't, if it's not there, it won't work. Okay. Yes. Is there ever a time where uh, the, the, the program doesn't work, but you can't specify the problem? Like it doesn't know where it is? It knows exactly where it is. If it's a syntax problem, if you, you know what does it mean, syntax problem? It means you don't write the grammar properly, you have misspelled something, it exactly pinpoints where it is. But if I do something like this, ch minus 1, right? If I run this beautiful program of mine and I enter over here b, it's going to say the next letter is a. This is a logical error. Logical error is your fault. Syntax error, compiler is going to get it, okay? You can, if, again, computer is stupid. If the programmer is stupid like me over there and puts minus one instead of plus one for the next thing, then program is going to act stupidly, right? Stupidly, I don't know, is that a word? I don't know. Anyways, are we okay? Are we okay? So, By now we know what these things are. We know like this is this is idiotic in anything, not in C. I mean like four is equal to H. How can you, how can you make a constant a literal value different? You can't do that, right? It's always the other way. Okay, you cannot set something constant to anything. That doesn't work that way, right? It doesn't work that way. <clears throat> we don't have power. We don't have two to power six in C language. If you want to do that, you have to write a function for it or include a header file called math.h, which actually has a function that does that. Okay? So 2 to power 5, too rich for her blood. <laughs> that's, we don't need that for now. It's just arithmetic stuff that we are doing. So that's why we have this. And you know exactly how these things work. That's, how does it work? And it explains. So uh, 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 anybody needs me to explain how this program works? Yeah. No, no, no. If the time comes, you're going to do it. For now, we don't have enough knowledge. That's what we are doing. But does importing many libraries affect the performance? Does no, no, it doesn't at all. No? no, no. You can have 55 things in, your, in front of your hand. If you don't use them, it doesn't change your, your behavior. Right. You, when you include something, the compile time may go up by the fraction of a second. But execution doesn't make any difference if you don't use it. So remember, if you include something, you're just making the size of your program bigger because you're including the, the lots of functions in your source of the program. If I don't call those functions, no difference. OK? Uh, you see over there says const float pi? You see that? Const. That's when, that, like, the, even saying it is paradox. 
that makes the variable pi constant. <laughs> How can a variable be constant? It's variable. No. Well, when you say variable, it means the, the place that you want to put the, 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 the container in which you want to put that float number in. If you make it constant, it means this is something that is not supposed to change. Because pi is a constant value universally, you don't want it to change. You want it always to remain the same. So you can put a constant in front of it. If somebody says after that pi is equal to 5, it's going to give a syntax error. It's not a logical error anymore. Compiler won't even compile it. It will stop you, telling you, you tell me this is constant. Now you're changing it? OK? So keep that in mind. That's what const is for. Const makes things read only. I wish we could actually say read only float pi. OK, yes? So if um, later on in the program, like if the program didn't change the value of pi mm -hmm. at all, really, right, mm -hmm. um, it wouldn't really matter if const was there, right? Like if I, if I wasn't. I could come over here, teach you butt naked if nobody cared. But is it right? <laughs> like, I know it's, I know it's bad. No, what I mean is that, like that, I have to give that. The, re the reason I'm telling you that is that there are so many different ways to do the same thing. But the correct way, right, so this is just better practice. it's better practice. And your worst enemy in programming, gentlemen, is yourself. You make that const not to make a stupid mistake later on to change it. Because you will. And I guarantee that. So when you feel something is supposed to suppose not to change, make it a const. It's good for you. It's good. 90% of the programs written by programmers are maintained by others. So even someone else comes in, it will prevent them to do that. They're going to change the pi. Oh, syntax was error. Oh, so it has to be constant. Oh, I made the mistake. So you force your business rule upon others. OK? One of the good things that you can make in an accounting program, you can make it a cost as what? Value of tax, for example. Because tax is not supposed to change. If it's supposed to change, it's supposed to be in settings. Government changes its rules and tax changes. Tax value is always the same, right? So you have to make sure nobody makes a mistake. Otherwise, otherwise your accounting program goes, goes out the drain, right? So things like that. You all right? Expressions. Arithmetic, logical. We have 15 minutes to talk about these things, and I'll go through it as quick as I can, um, but not missing anything and make sure everybody understands. I'll give you a very simple, straightforward explanation of how C language works. Uh, zero, three. What do I do? Uh, we already had this thing, right? I-O and calculations. That's the one, right? Yeah. Oh. Um, so this one is, I want to say character, I-O. So dash 3, uh, sorry, 0, 3, car, I-O. <laughs> I-O dot C. All right, so that's that. There is only one rule when it comes with operations and operators in, in C language. Okay? An operator in C language always, in, they're in two ways, an operator. It's either unary or binary. What the heck that means? Unary means it has only one operand. Who, who knows what is an operand? What does it mean when I say operand? No, operand. Operand? Which means? That was, that was, the, uh, He actually get, mentioned the perfect interview answer. Like if I, was, if I was at IBM, I would have hired him. But no one will understand the thing you operate. But what does it mean? What did you say one more time? The same thing. Don't change it. The thing you operate on. The thing you operate on. That's called an operand. OK? If I say 2 plus 3, what is the operator? What is the operand here? Operand and plus is operator. Now, do we understand what operand is? OK. Operand is what? It is being operated on. 
Okay, so which means if I say A plus B, I have two operands over here, right? But if I say minus C, I have only one operand. I'm negating the value of C. Are we okay with this? The second one is called the unary operator. The first one is called the binary operator. Operators in C language, C, okay, they return value, some value, all of them, okay, all of them. Any operator returns a value, even if you say, I'm saying A is set to B. What is the job of assignment operator? The job is to get the content of A and put it in B, correct? But it returns a value. What? The value that is just assigned. So I can do this. I can say set the value of A to B and then set the value of C to whatever you set. So it becomes, all of these things become B. Because all operators in C return value, you can always get that value and pass it to something else. Like, any, like mathematics, when you put parentheses around it, that gets priority. That happens first. Okay? But don't do nut stuff like this. This doesn't make any, this doesn't make sense. Why this doesn't make sense if I do something like this? It means first set C to A and return its value. What is the value? 52. Can I set 52 to B? No. That's nuts. Okay? So although you can put parentheses to prioritize things, but make it in a way that you yourself don't go, this is nuts. Okay? It should make sense. Mathematical sense. Are we okay with that? Well, are we okay with that? Okay, now let's do operators. <clears throat> we have several different types of operators. We have arithmetic ones. We have, I don't even remember. Let me put the correct terminology in here. That's not the one. We have arithmetic, relational, and logical. Okay, what is arithmetic? You know, 2 plus 2, 3 plus 5, 9 divided by 3. Okay, so I can say, if I say A multiply by B, is that the wrong thing to do in C language? No, it's not. Of course it is because I don't have the variables. But let's say I have the variables over here. I have, I have int A that is 10 and I have int B that is 20. Can I say A multiply by B? Is that an error? No, but it doesn't make sense. It's going to be 200 and goes to cyberspace because nobody's catching it over there. Okay? A is multiplied by B and then goes where? Nowhere. That's not an error. It's just stupid to write. Okay? That's why if you, if you need to, you have to put over here something that actually makes sense. Result is A multiplied by B. So, so the value is multiplied, goes into result. You can catch that value and put it in something else too if you want to, but we don't need it at this point. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Operators are two types in C language. They either have side effect or not have side effect. When they don't have side effect, the operands won't change afterwards. Like this, A and B remain 10 and 20 afterwards, right? But Assignment operator, it has side effect. The left one changes afterwards. Do we understand this? Are we okay with this? So side effect means it has side effect. All the operators in C, we know exactly what they are, so I'm not going to go through ex explaining how A plus B works, okay? But we have shorthanding stuff. C people, they love to write short stuff. They didn't want to write long programs. So they said, we need to first, oh, first let's understand something. Oh, backtrack on what I said. My apologies. Let's go back. Rewind. That's an assignment, not an equality. In mathematics, in mathematics, if I say A is set to A plus B, that's nuts. Because you scratch A with A, then it becomes 0 is equal to B, right? That doesn't make sense. In programming, the left side of an assignment operator happens after the right side is happening. 
So first a plus b happens, which means a plus b becomes 30. Done. Now assignment operator will get that 30 and put it in a. That's how you can modify the values of variables instead of just changing them. Pardon me? Duh. Yeah, if it's constant, yeah, you don't change. Yeah, all right, so that's that. But the C language says, C language says, that's too many to write. You can simply say A plus equal B, and that means the same. So when you put plus equal, you're essentially saying, add the value of B to A. Okay? Are we okay with this? So if I say, That means divide the value of A by B. Essentially, which means what? Which means A is set to A divided by B. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? All three basic arithmetic operations can do like that. Minus equal, plus equal, multiply equal, or divide equal. Same thing. Okay, they all work the same way. Now what I want to get to is relational operators. In relational operators, what do we have? This is getting too much. Let me just save this and go to the next one. I'm not printing anything in here. Uh, Alt F A, zero four, operators, intro, dot C. We have relational operators, which actually return us yes or no, true or false. I can say A greater than B. Is that correct? Is that true? What is A? 10. What is B? 20. Is A greater than B? No. When you say no, correction, when C says no, it means zero. Literally. Don't tell me false is zero, zero. Zero. Zero means false. That's the rule. There is no hidden agenda behind it. So if I put a result in here, int result, and I say over here, result is set to that one, and I say printf, if I can type it, of course, printf, uh, a greater than B is, or we can put percent D actually, percent D greater, greater than percent D. In here I'm going to say percent D. In here now I can say A, B, and result. And if I print this beautiful, run this beautiful program of mine, and please do this, do this every time. You write a code to test to see if what you know is correct or not. See, A, 10 gra greater than 20 is zero. Are we okay with this? Yes. There is a standard rule thing. Can we use it? No. There is no such thing in C language. Thank you for, thank you for looking up C++. Bool is C++. It's not C. We don't have such a thing in C. In C99? Not, this is not 90 time. We don't have bool. We have zero as false. And... The answer is no. We'll explain that, okay? And if I have the exact same thing like this, less than B, less than that one, and I run this beautiful program of mine, I have that. Okay? Are we okay with this? Yes. Pardon me? No, that, I told you, that return zero is a completely different thing. The, you're talking to operating system over there. You are not retur returning true or false. You are telling to, um, to operator the code return is zero. That doesn't mean anything. Zero means bad, zero means good, depending on what you set. I'll explain later on that, yes. How do we spec the result to be either zero or one? Now it's an integer, so it could be set to anything. 
C language. Now, I'm going to give you the next news, okay? To examine something, if C language, we're going to come to a decision making the next time we'll see each other. When C language gets to decision making, when such a thing happens, then C language says if it's zero, it's false. If it's anything but zero, it's true. So when C checks a condition for any reason, in any expression, wants to examine to see if this thing true or not, then that's what happens. Okay? And finally, so that's, we have less than, we have greater than, we have less than, so we have, these are the operators. I can do less than, greater than, and we can have less than or equal, greater than or equal, then we can check for equality. We have three more minutes, don't pack your stuff. Three minutes I have, okay? Don't pack your stuff, you bad people. Okay. So we have, and we have checking for equality. That's the most important thing, most common mistake in C programming. Two assignments back to back is checking for equality, which means is A equal to B or not? That's what it is. It doesn't set anything to anything, all right? And then we have logical operators. Logical operators work like this. When you test two conditions, it checks for truth or falsehood. If you have two truths, so essentially, if, so you can do this. You can say, uh, so I have uh, int condition 1 set to 1 and int condition 2 set to zero. I can say result is equal to condition one and condition two, which means if they are both correct. Or I can say or. What is and and or? Or I can say not. Now, not is easy. Not means if it's true, make it false. If it's false, make it true. That's that one. And is this. So when you say and, the two conditions are like this. You have a condition. It's a switch. Goes to the next one. It's a switch. And then comes down to a light bulb. And then you have a battery in here. Okay? If they are both closed, light goes on. If they are both true, light goes on. If one of them is closed, one of them is open, it won't. So and statement becomes true only if they're both correct, true. Otherwise, the light won't go on. And or statement is like this. And then we have the battery. And this is the second one. If both of them are closed, it's true. If even one of them is closed, it's true, it's true. The only way an or situation can go false is when they are both false. Are we okay with this? That's the end of today, okay? Have yourself a beautiful day, and I'll see you the next time. Get ready for the quiz. I'm not going to mention what it's going to be. It's going to be on next week, right? So when you're coming the next time, you have a quiz on the bad things of next week. Yes, sir.